these. These are exciting times. They're exciting in Washington, and I have really looked forward to coming to Wellesley. I thought it was going to be fun, but I never thought it would be this much fun. So thank you for that. Wellesley, you see, is not just a place, but an idea. It's an experiment in excellence in which diversity is not just tolerated, but embraced. The essence of this spirit was captured in a moving speech about tolerance given last year by a student body president of one of your sister colleges. She related the story by Robert Fulgham about a young pastor finding himself in charge of some very energetic children. He hit upon this game called Giants, Wizards, and Dwarves. You have to decide now, he told the children. Which are you? A giant, a wizard, or a dwarf? At that, a t small girl tugged at his pants leg and asked, Where do the mermaids stand? And the pastor tells her that there are no mermaids, and she says, Yes, there are. There are. I'm a mermaid. This little girl knew what she was, and she was not about to give up on either her identity or her game. She intended to take her place wherever the mermaids fit into the grand scheme of things. So where do the mermaids stand? All of those who are different. Those who do not fit in the boxes or the pigeonholes. Answer that question, wrote Fulgham, and you can build a school, a nation, or a whole world. As that very wise young woman said, diversity, like anything worth having, requires effort. Effort to learn about and respect difference, to be compassionate with one another, to cherish our own identity, and to accept unconditionally the same in others. You should all be very proud that this is the Wellesley spirit. I know your first choice today was Alice Walker, known for the color purple. Instead, you got me, known for the color of my hair. Alice Walker's book has a special resonance here. At Wellesley, each class is known by a color. For four years, the class of 1990 has won the color purple. Today, you meet to say goodbye to all of that, to begin a new and very personal journey, and to search for your own true colors. In the world that awaits you, beyond the shores of this lake, no one can say what your true colors may be, but this I do know. You have a first-class education from a first-class school. You need not, cannot, live a paint-by-numbers life. Decisions are not irrevocable. Choices do come back. And as you set off from Wellesley, I hope that many of you will consider making three very special choices. The first is to believe in something larger than yourself and to get involved in the big ideas of our time. I chose literacy because I honestly believe that if more people could read, write, and comprehend, we would be that much closer to solving so many of the problems that plague our nation and our society. Early on, I made another choice, which I hope you'll make as well. Whether you're talking about education, career, or service, you're talking about life. And life really must have joy. It's supposed to be fun. One of the reasons I made the most important decision of my life to marry George Bush is because he made me laugh. It's true, sometimes we laugh through our tears, but that shared laughter has become one of our strongest bonds. Find the joy in life because as Ferris Bueller said on his day off, life moves pretty fast and if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you're gonna miss it. The third choice that must not be missed is to cherish your human connections, your relationships with your family and your friends. For several years, you've had impressed upon you the importance of your career of dedication and hard work, and of course, that's true. But as important as your obligation as a doctor, a lawyer, or a business leader will be, you are a human first. And those human connections with your spouse, with your children, with your friends, 
are the most important investments you will ever make. At the end of your life, you will not regret having passed one more test, winning one more verdict, or closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with your husband, your friend, or your parent. We are in a transitional period now. We're in a transitional period right now. Fascinating and exhilarating time learning to adjust to changes and choices that we as men and women are facing. As an example, I remember when a friend said on hearing her husband complain to his buddies that he had to babysit. Quickly setting him straight, my friend told her husband that when it's your kids, it is not called babysitting. Maybe we should adjust faster, or maybe we should adjust slower. But whatever the era, whatever the times, one thing will never change. Fathers and mothers, if you have children, they must come first. You must read to your children, you must hug your children, and you must love your children. Your success as a family and our success as a society depends not on what happens inside the White House, but what happens inside your house. For over 50 years, it was said that the winner of the Wellesley Annual Hoop Race would be the first to get married. Now, they say the winner will be the first to become a CEO. Both of these stereotypes show too little tolerance for those who want to stand with the mermaids. So, so I want to offer a, le a new legend. The winner of the hoop race will be the first to realize her dream. Not society's dream, her own personal dream. And who, who knows? Somewhere out in, somewhere out in this audience, there may even be someone who will one day follow in my footsteps and preside over the White House as the president's spouse, and I wish him well. The controversy ends here, but our conversation is just beginning, and a worthwhile conversation it has been. So as you leave Wellesley today, take with you deep thanks for the courtesy and the honor you have shared with me. Thank you, God bless you, and may your future be worthy of your dreams.